Been, it's been seven days since the second leg in Iceland. How are you feeling both mentally and physically after after that disappointing defeat? Uh, I think mentally, obviously it was a massive, massive blow for everybody. I think pretty much all week you can sense in the change room that everyone's very deflated about what happened. And I think overall from the two legs, I think we're definitely kicking ourselves because at times throughout the both games we put ourselves in a comfortable position where it looked as if things were going to plan uh, and obviously it didn't end up working like that so yeah definitely uh, downbeat I would say but as in anything in football you've got to bounce back and we've got to move on from it as hard as it is we've got to move on and as a club look forward to next weekend. In terms of physically, I know it was a, 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 on AstroTurf, I know you trained on AstroTurf both the day before and the day before that too. You know, in terms of yourself and other members of the squad, has that taken anything out of you? Um, uh, not really. I think obviously initially, after the, the second leg, going extra time, getting home at six in the morning, what have you, it, the next day obviously you're going to be stiff, you're going to be a bit tired, but I think by now everybody's recovered and um, it's about getting another good week's training into us. Uh, and then the build up for the first league game next Saturday. If they want to uh, dwell on it too much, have you and the, the, the lads had a chance to actually dissect you know, what went on? Because you mentioned that you, you were kicking yourself, but have you managed to try and put your finger on just what, you know, what quite didn't work over the two legs? Uh, well, we've, we've obviously seen the goals back. We've, well, from both legs. Um, you can argue whether the ref should have obviously give all three penalties or. Um, I think we feel the second goal over there was the one that hurt us the most. As if when we're two, when we're two one up, we should maybe see the game out without a doubt. Uh, so we're very disappointed about that goal. And obviously the third goal, long range effort. Um, Dan's obviously spoke about saying that he feels he maybe should have saved that as well. So we can look at all the goals, but I don't know. I think like I touched on before, I think we've only got ourselves to blame for for not getting through the tie when you lead the game 2-0 at home uh, and then leading the game out there twice I think uh, we've only got ourselves to blame so it's just one of them things uh, and obviously nobody likes to to hear it and they don't listen to excuses and there's, there's no excuse obviously we've let ourselves down we've let the club down the fans down everybody that travelled out there and we're well aware of that um, and it's up to us now to restore a bit of faith and, and look to obviously do well from the start of the season. Uh, last time I remember I kind of feeling like this at the club was probably post Albion Rovers in the Scottish Cup. Does it give you hope and, and inspiration if you like that on the back of that not only did we go on an unbelievable run you know at that particular time I think it was the best run in 77 years in the club's history almost but we meant to finish second in the table so I suppose it proves there is metal in this squad. Oh without a doubt we've got we've got that uh, character throughout the squad um, the lads in that change room aren't too different from this to the to the squad that we had last season. Like you said, that finished second, so there's definitely characters there, um, and it is up to us. I think that's that, the last game of last season shows you the highs of football, and yeah. obviously in comparison to last week, the lows, and that's that's what it can be like at times. Very frustrating this game, but um, I'm sure if we went out and and won comfortably next Saturday, everybody would yeah. be the best thing since sliced bread again and there'll be a nice positive feeling around the club so we intend to obviously start strong bounce back and and yeah have another positive season like we did last year on, on a wider topic about European football and this is a something that's new into Scottish football as you say or relatively new into Scottish football uh, obviously Mother lose to, to Stjernan an Icelandic team a Scandinavian team you know, Aberdeen and, and St John's are doing well, so they're bucking the trend slightly. But you know, Celtic's result against last night has reignited the debate about when we start our football and you know the preparation that teams have against you know teams who are maybe midway through their season or have kicked into their season. As a player, does it? Do you feel it makes a real significant difference when you come up against a team, you know, semi-pro or whatever, who are 15, 16 games into their season? And how difficult does that make it? I think it makes a massive difference. I think you can just tell. I from myself and um, from the lads, once you're, I don't know, five, ten games into a season, you've got that sharpness, you've got that that match tempo. Um, and so, yeah, there might have been a part-time team, Stjarnan, but obviously, the, I suppose, at the end of the second leg, especially, they probably had a little bit more on their legs than, 
than ourselves and that's why we are kicking ourselves for taking in extra time because we, we should have seen the game out. Um, but yeah, like you say, Celtic last night and it, it definitely does, I know obviously quality wise, well, we, we and Pep had more quality than them but obviously if you haven't got the the energy in the bank or what have you like you would do if you're midway through the season then it probably doesn't count for a lot Would you favour a move to in Scottish football either an earlier start i.e. for example starting at the start of July the league season or you know a more radical you know similar to the Irish model or Icelandic or Finland or Norway going from say March to October or November I don't know I think um it is one of them things. I can't imagine that they'll be looking to change much as, obviously, like you said, the Icelandic side are quite away into their into their league. But I, I think British football. I can't see England, Scotland, really really changing it too much. And it's maybe just one of them things that we just have to deal with. Whether you have less time off in the summer uh, and come back early to try and maybe get that little bit fitter, but then it can have repercussions because you, obviously the lads who have played. The majority of the season do need that time to recover um, and rest the legs. So it's it's one of them. It's up in the air. I don't know personally what, which is the way forward, but obviously it's something that they maybe need to look at if they want to progress further in in future. You personally, obviously, it was a, a a fantastic start to the season for you. I think probably most fans just pick for play of the year probably between August and December. Um, probably the less said about the best second half of the season for you personally with injuries, the, the better. But you know you must be really now looking forward to kicking on and trying to get back to the the form that you were showing in the first half of last season. Yeah, massively. Um, it was it was very very uh, disappointing the way things panned out for me at the second part of the season. Um, I don't know. Obviously, three operations when I was supposed to be out for three weeks was a bit of a a hammer blow but these things happen in football and I've spoke about it in pre-season it's I intend to to bounce back from that and I would love nothing more than to to be playing consistently well and staying injury free all season and being part of a side that's that's going to be up there again fighting for them Europe, European spots which I'm sure if we can keep uh, the lads fit and keep the keep the momentum from last season take that into into this season there's no reason why we can't be doing that Obviously, it's hard to believe. Actually, the league season is now only a week away. You know, I can't believe the summer's flown so quickly. Um, St. Mirren are the first game. They're one of the same teams who have changed things about. They've got a new manager. They've got a number of new players. That'll be a, a difficult one. St. Mirren's always been a tough game for us. You know, over the last couple of years. It will be. Uh, like you say, a, a new setup. So, it, obviously, before with the with Daniel and the manager. They would have a, a, a set up where we would be aware of pretty much how the formation and how they would play. So they might come and they brought obviously a few new players in and they might set up in a in a different style. So that's something that we're going to have to be aware of. Um, but like any game in this league, we know it's going to be very tough. Um, but we intend to make it a, a tough game for them as well. Um, and it's a game that, although last week, like we said. Everybody's a little bit downbeat, but it's a game that we need to now build up for, really look forward to it and, and get a positive result from it. You touched on it in the previous answer about the expectations of the season. That's what I was going to ask you next. Aberdeen have improved, there's no doubt about it. Dun United have maybe lost a couple of key players, but I no doubt they'll have money to invest between now and the end of the transfer window. Um, what challenges lie ahead for, for Motherwell this season? Best of the rest three times. I seem to ask this question every summer, what can we do again next season? But what are the expectations amongst the squad? Uh, I think amongst the squad last season, I don't think from the start we said, right, we're going to get second. I think we always aim to obviously do as well as we can and I think we uh, we quietly went about our business and just gradually put ourselves in contention for that second spot and even going into the last game, we probably still weren't even expected to do it. So I don't think anything will change this season. I think we'll, we'll go out there, um, hopefully go on a concert uh, and see where it takes us. Obviously, without it goes without saying, we would love to finish second again, as every every side behind Celtic would do. Um, but no, I don't think we're sat here now thinking, right, we're going for second. We're going to do as well as we can, and, and hopefully that brings us a European spot. Back to you personally as well. Sean Hutchison's left in the summer. He's joined Fulham. Uh, great move for him personally. In the game so far, you've played centre-back. 
Stuart McCall said publicly that he's, he's after the defender, a centre back. Um, that might mean you're thought centre back, or it might be right back. It depends. But do you have preferences in that sense, or you, uh, for you, a point of view is it's just a case of making sure you're playing week in and week out. Um, f- well, for the majority of my career, I've I've predominantly played at right back. So I would say, arguably, that's probably my best position. Um, but I've got no issues whatsoever with. If uh, I end up having a run of games at centre half, right back, centre mid, up front, if he wants it, do, honestly, doesn't bother me as long as I can stay injury free and have a, a good run of games. Um, the managers mentioned about bringing in another defender, and I think that that's great because we are maybe lacking in a few numbers at the minute. And if we were to pick up suspensions, knocks, then we are going to be a little bit threadbare. So that's that's great. It brings competition for places and. Like I say, as long as I'm fit and available for selection, I'll be doing my best to be out there in whatever position the manager wants me to. Simon, thanks and good luck.